Text is everywhere in programming, in user input, file names, and even large language models. In Python, to represent text, we use strings, which are simply sequences of characters like ABC, cat, or hello world. To create a string in Python, we write the text we want to represent, for example, cat, inside either single quotation marks or double quotation marks. To display these strings, we can use Python's built-in print function. Notice that in both cases, the quotes don't appear in the output. That's because the quotation marks aren't part of the string itself. They simply tell Python where the string starts and ends. So you might be wondering, if both approaches produce the same result, why does Python offer two ways to create strings? Good question. You'll see why later in the video. Awesome. Now we know how to create a string to store a word. But strings are extremely flexible. We can use them to represent any sequence of characters, letters, punctuation, symbols, and even numbers. Wait, strings can store numbers? That might seem surprising, since Python already has integers and floats for that. So why does Python offer multiple ways for us to represent numbers? To see why, suppose we want to calculate the sum of 1 and 2. In code, if we write these numbers as integers and add them, Python gives us 3, just as we expect. But, if we represent the same numbers as strings and try to add them, we get 12? That's some new age math right there. What happened? Well, when we use the plus operator, Python looks at the data types of the values on each side of the operator. If both sides are numbers, either an integer or float, the plus sign performs addition. But if both sides are strings, the plus operator ties the strings together. This operation is called concatenation. And if one side is a number while the other is a string, Python doesn't know whether to add or concatenate, so it throws an error instead. This example shows how a value's data type can determine what an operator actually does. This is why the best way to represent a number depends on the situation. If you're doing math, like calculating totals or averages, integers and floats are the right choice. But if you're working with numeric identifiers, things like zip codes or bank account numbers, strings might make more sense. For example, a zip code might start with zeros. Storing it as an integer, causes an error, since Python doesn't allow integers to start with zero. But storing it as a string works and preserves the zip code exactly as written. Awesome! Now you know why Python lets us represent numbers as both text and numeric types, and when to choose one over the other. Earlier in the video, remember how we said strings can use single or double quotes? Let's wrap up by clarifying when it's best to use each one. As we said before, for simple strings, both options behave the same way. But when your string's content is more complex, one might work better than the other. For example, if your text includes an apostrophe, like, it's a sunny day, using single quotes causes an error. Python thinks the apostrophe ends the string early. In this case, using double quotes fixes the issue. Similarly, if your text includes double quotes, like to represent what someone says, defining the string with double quotes will break it. Wrapping it in single quotes avoids that problem. So as a rule of thumb, use single quotes when your text contains double quotes. And use double quotes when your text contains single quotes. Beyond that, it's your choice. Awesome, now you know how to create strings, handle text and numbers, and decide when to use single or double quotes. If you'd like to practice what you've learned in this video, check out the notebook we created, 
It has a few exercises to get you started. We're working on lots more Python explainer videos like this one, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like to learn about, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.